Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of Darts Around the Globe, a series where we meet a new darts player from a new country in every episode. Today we are joined by the best South American darts player uh, darts has ever seen. He was the first South American darts player to win a game at the PDC World Championships. We're talking about Diogo Portela. Hi guys, my name is Diogo Portela and this is Darts Around the Globe. Diogo, how are you doing today? Hi, thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, I feel good, feel very fresh. Had a good night of sleep and uh, yeah, looking forward to Q School next week. For sure, and I'm very lucky to talk uh, with you before Q School. Um, you are probably full in practice for, for Q School now. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the, uh, you know, your practice routine these days? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, I haven't been uh, practicing much since the uh, birth of my daughter. Uh, she's been through a lot of problems and uh, yeah, I had to focus on uh, fixing that things. But um, I think after the words, everything got better. Um, even I, even for the words, I didn't practice too much, to be honest. Mm. But the last three weeks, I think, uh, my wife... Um, my my wife was sent home after the second lockdown here in the UK, and she's been working from home. So I can sometimes leave my daughter with her, and and then I have a little bit more uh, time of practice during the day, and also during the evening, which I uh, I had already been practicing a little bit more. So for the last three weeks or two weeks and, and a bit, I um, I kind of double my hours in the, in the practice board and. Starting to get some results, but right. uh, I I am far away from the Diogo I was two three years ago when I won the Challenge Tour. I know that, but I can see uh, that I can get some special moments in the dart board more often now. So I've uh, missed a nine dart in the online competition. I um, I took out ten. Uh, I've been hitting a lot of twelve thirteen da uh, leg darts. So I kind of I, I can feel the best uh, the best darts are coming. It's mm -hmm. just not coming together all in once. I, I finish a twelve dart and then after twenty one darts I don't have a dart a double. So I need to be a little bit more consistent. But I still have three or more or four days to to put it, put things right before the Q school really. Well, it's still a good sign that you're uh, you know throwing those ten darts uh, um, uh, sometimes. Um, I assume your practice. Um, these days and from the last weeks are mostly online playing online tournaments playing uh, like you said before we recorded that you're playing uh, practicing with Danny Baggish the, the American uh, uh, well, well the best player from the USA um, is that something you you do more often now these days just messaging a, a darts player and, and playing with him or something like that Yes, yes. Um, to be honest, I always like to have a, a, a practice partner. So when I was living in London, I practiced a lot, a lot with George Kington. Um, it was like two, three times a week, plus mm -hmm. tournaments over the weekend. We always travel together. Um, and here, over here, when I uh, opened off for the last two years, the first two years, Cody Harris was living with me, so it was a lot easier to practice when you have someone uh, in, in the next room. Uh, and after that, Dave Evans as well. Uh, we always meet up together. But the point is, for the last year or so, we couldn't practice. We couldn't meet up to practice. And I uh, and I had problems as well. I've had problems with my daughter, family problems, family mm -hmm. issues. And and I, I always, at the same time, liked to have my own time in the practice board. And when I felt during the past three or four months, is just practicing on your own and you know, without a tournament to look for or some kind of a target to, to reach, it just get boring. And, you know, you, you, uh, the more you try to push yourself to get better, um, the worse it comes, you know, because you, you, you're just pretending to have pressures. You're not actually having it. So for the last week, I actually start practicing with um, Michael Rastovitz, Mike the Decker, uh, then in baggage, um, I played a few online competitions as well where I could beat some good players, mm -hmm. uh, Dave Pilot, Steve Hine, and a few others as well. So, you know, it's just, it, it, it's coming. I can feel that my, my form is coming back, but it's different when you play online. It's just, it, it's not the same rhythm. You know, I barely walk back from, from the Oki, and I, 
I already have to throw again, which yeah, never yeah. happens in a real match, you know. So I kind of I feel, I feel myself rushing so many times, and I think that might be a problem of my consistent, you know. And when I when I get to the Q school where I actually have the time proper about every throw, I uh, I can I can be a little bit better. Maybe that's the five ten percent I need to improve is in my rhythm, you know. But you know, we have to play with the tools is in your hand and um and that's what I'm doing. You know, I can feel I'm getting better every week. Uh I just hope I, I get uh, the things right for Q school, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we will talk about Q school uh, in this podcast as well. Um, it certainly is difficult for an, an amateur, semi-professional player like you to um, have that uh, rhythm of playing uh, against real people <laughs> in, in real real games. Um, let's first talk a little bit about your uh, 2020. It was a real hectic year um, um, with, uh, at the end of World Championship, a lot of media coverage for you as well because... Uh, you won your first game over there. Um, in one of your interviews, you said uh, it would have been your your last game if if you hadn't won from from Steve Beaton. Um, so how yeah, how are you now? Do you have a more positive mindset for for the next season, twenty twenty one? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I've always been realistic, and uh, I, my my drop of form in the last two years was was something that I wasn't expecting because. I literally, I think I am one of the guys that put more hours in the practice board. You know, I, I, I always practice three, four, five hours a day. I always done that. And I couldn't see the results coming, really. Uh, I, I've raised my game so much in the first three or four e years that I was in the UK. Mm -hmm. And after that, I kind of got a, a plateau mark and I couldn't, couldn't pass over it. And that was doing my head. And on top of that, all this stress of lockdown, all this stress with my family, I, I was just thinking, you know what, I just have a break and uh, take a year or so off. The problem is, because I quit my job a few years ago, I wouldn't be doing nothing, you know. So I, I, I started to, to feel depressed because I have I, I had no target, nothing to push on. And and then more, more and more f personal problems come over and they're like, you know what, uh, that's it for me. I can't can't handle that that much pressure. But you know, when when the PDC extended the dates uh, for the Q school for entry the Q school for like two weeks, I think, and um, I thought I thought a few times about not not having a go this year because it will be another year in lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't miss much if I don't have my, my tool card. Or, you know. There is no promise of challenge tools, you know. The, the PTC wants to play at least eight challenge tools until uh, end of June, but that's not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen. So if if there is one year to take off, they, this might be the year, you know. So I was considering it, but I had already paid for everything, and I'm like, you know, what? once you do that, just embrace it and and do your best. And that was something that the Q school came uh, in in to me this year as something that I was looking for is probably uh it could be my only tournament this year. You never know what's gonna happen in the in this in this world, you know. So if it's the only tournament, just go there and enjoy and play one da darts for one week. Imagine I could never think what one week of professional darts tournament. You know, if I get through the first three days I have a few more four more days to play. Mm -hmm. It's it it could be one of the best weeks of my life in terms of that. So I'm tr just trying to go there and enjoy playing darts again, you know, and 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 see the positive things instead of uh, uh, it's not going to be any any tournaments or my life was a nightmare, which is not anymore. And and that that has been helping me a lot, really. So yeah, I think I am. I've got a very positive feedback, uh, very positive um, mindset now. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's very good to hear, and and maybe, yeah, it is um, uh, the chance to do well on Q school now because maybe you're thinking, oh, I don't have, uh, I have to put, I don't have to put so much pressure on myself now. I, I can just maybe relax and and see what you're saying, um, the positive sides of playing a darts tournament for a week long because not many people can can say something like that. Um, 
obviously we're hoping for the best. Um, let's go back to that World Championship. You played against Steve Beaton, but first of all, um, the Brazilian spot or the South American sto- spot for the World Championship was um, unclear for a long time. There was no qualifying tournament to to be organized. Um, of course, many people expected you to be there. Um, did you expect it to uh, yourself to to have a call from the PDC? Uh, uh, no, uh, up to a certain point. Uh, I, I actually, I thought, because um, I don't deal with this South America qualifier. My dad deals, but she, mm-hmm. he's very professional. And uh, he never told me anything about it. He just said, you know what, with the traveling conditions here and no government in South America doing anything about COVID, we are the worst region in the world about COVID. So uh, we can try to handle the, the tournament, to host the tournament, but it's not going to be the uh, the best thing to do. And I said, you know what, you take the, your decision. Even if you hold it, I'm not going to go. You know, if you host the tournament, I'm not going to go. I had a, I had, I had a, at the time, a four-month-old daughter, and I didn't want to catch COVID and come mm-hmm. back and, and pass it to her, you know. So, like, you know what? Health and family comes first. So I'm not going to travel to South America. And then we're supposed to host uh, the the qualifying in Costa Rica this year, and, and they were closed as well. Everything was shut down. So, like, you know what? Do what's best, and they... They decided to not run the tournament, and uh, my dad sent a mail to Mark Porter, and Mark Porter said, "Okay, that's fine, no worries." Uh, my my dad even suggested to get an online qualifier, but yeah. I think it's too much too much in, in in risk if you if you hold an online qualifier for a price like that. You know, you 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 can get um, some risk of people cheating and blah blah. But not not saying anyone about South America would cheat. But you never know, you know, when mm. there is a prize money like that in the port. And 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 I said this to my manager at the time, and I said, you know what, I, I'm not going to be in the woods. And he said, never say never. But he had already spoken with Matt Porton and couldn't tell me. And I'm like, you know what, that's going to be a miracle. And and I don't know, maybe a week after, uh, a week before the PDC announced some some post on Twitter came up like uh, nothing about South America blah 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 I hope Diogo is being invited and I replied like um, as soon as I know something I post it here but I I doubt it I, I don't think PDC will invite me and and then they invite me the week after but Matt Porter messaged me about that post and say we are talking about uh, it with your dad, so please don't tell any anyone. But I didn't know uh-huh. they were talking with my dad. My oh. dad kept kept a secret, you know. You know, like Jesus Christ, you know, <laughs> what might happen really? So I I, I was like, uh, it, they still talking. If Matt Porter messaged me that he could message me like, okay, you already got a spot, you know. So I, um, uh, not that I was thinking po- uh, negative, but I was just trying to not create too much expectation if they didn't invite me. Mm-hmm. And and I only start practicing for the Wolves after the announcement. And I didn't see, I didn't even see in the first place. It was a message, a guy, uh, um, a friend of mine that messaged me like, uh, congratulations, bro, like, on what? <laughs> wow. and like, j- just have a look in the, uh, <laughs> in the PDC website. You're being, you're being invited to PDC. You're like, really? And he's like, yeah, you didn't know that. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> And then wow. after that, I start practicing, you know, th- that was it. Well, it truly was a miracle. Yeah, for sure. I think um, like it, it, for, for us, the darts fans, it, it made sense because you made 500 pounds for the Order of Merit at the early start of, e- of the year while being invited on the Pro Tour, what already was a miracle because <laughs> I think you were like 40th on the Challenge Tour of Merit or something like that. And then... Um, the last tournament of, of, of um, um, before COVID and stuff like that, All, a lot of players already couldn't make it, but they invited you. You won one game, you won 500 pounds on the Order of Merit. And uh, in my opinion, that, that was one of the reasons the PDC at least had an argument to say, we just invite the best South American darts player on the Order of Merit, which was you. Um, and then you played on the World Championship, another miracle happened again you won against steve beaton what was going on in your mind when well we all saw it live on tv but what was going on inside your your head when you won that game 
to be honest, I think I was pretty clear in my interviews. You know, it was it was uh, the word, the weight of the word coming out of my shoulders. You know, it was uh, I I never felt a relief like that, and all the emotions come out that. You know, it was like a good a good turning point for a rubbish year that I had. You know, mm-hmm. and um, looking back, uh, uh, I I didn't play very well in the Q school. But I did play very, very well in the challenge tool, although I didn't get too many points. But I was losing with 93, 95 average. Oh, pardon on me. Um, I was losing with 93, 95 average, uh, you know, in, in very good games, very close games. You know, people were playing like out of their skin to beat me. Uh, and I was really happy f- for that. When I had a chance to, to, to be in the pro tool, I, I didn't think twice, like, yes, I'm ready. And I... I play Arumbini first game, um, and and I, I was five new up like there against him, not taking anything away from from him. You know, he, he did play some good darts. He tried to come back in that match, and then he finished it off. And my second match in that pro tour was against uh, Ian White, and I was averaging well over a hundred uh, in good part of the match, up to four each, and then I had. Um, uh, two darts to, to break him and go 5-4 and then throw for the match. I missed that dart. And and then he went he, he went to take 5-4 five, five, and then he broke me with a 12 dart. So, you know, I was quite close, toe-to-toe to Ian White, one of the best players in, in the world in the floor tournaments, you know. Uh, and from that point, it was like, okay, I'm back to myself. I'm back playing well. And... The week after, everything was closed, so I couldn't I couldn't keep my form going, because I, I, I'm sure if that happened, I would be a different yoga through the year, you know. But you know, things happen for a reason. I've learned a lot in the lockdown. I've um, uh, I've improved my self esteem. I, I thought I had to go through depression, but now I know I'm stronger than ever, mm-hmm. and I'm very mature that player. Now I know how to play the game instead of. Uh, uh, complaining about things that happen and just focus on my next start and they, this mentality changed me a lot and yeah coming back to the woods you know after everything I've been through uh, that year that could be a lot good mainly talking to South America because we are we are going to start streaming the um, uh, the Premier League in the South America wow. and I would I was invited for the the AZN to be a um, commentator. So we we would have someone talking Portuguese for Brazilian people. It, it could be the turning point for Brazil's Brazil's dart, you know. And everything was short. I I I lost my uh, winning streak. I lost my form, and I lost the opportunity to make darts in Brazil bigger, which was which is my dream. Mm-hmm. And after that, everything was just downhill. But in the World Championship, I put the things right. I took all the pressure that was in my mind. I, I gave Brazil's dart the exposure they, they deserve. And I'm up for more. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm come back fresh and, uh, you, you know, I've got the energy back on and I've got my uh, focus back on, on playing my best darts. Wow, that's that's the spirit. Um before before the world championship you also had um, some other experience on tv the world cup of darts as always brazil is there invited by the pdc um you played against the netherlands a, a difficult team to play against of of course um uh, you lost with uh, one to five and you played with uh, bruno rangel um yeah well i was wondering because i know the, the world cup of darts qualifier for the brazilian team was played online um, was it a tournament that you followed live and and hoped? Oh, I'm I hope I'm gonna play with Bruno or I hope I'm gonna play with my brother or did did you follow the tournament uh, live? I, yeah, I did follow the the tournament. Of course, I was uh, checking the results every now and then, and uh, I think the semis and the final was streamed as well, um, and and I was following every every everything. But it's just not the same when you play online and you play. Um, a real, you know, face-to-face t- tournament, um, but uh, I'm I'm glad it was online because there was th- that gave some very good players the chance to qualify. And when I saw the field, I said, you know what, whoever comes out of this field deserves to be here. Would be the best one. 
Uh, just a shame that Bruno uh, didn't perform on the stage mm-hmm. like he did a couple of years back when we fit, when we beat Denmark 5-1. He basically took out everything I left to him, you know, and um, this time he couldn't he couldn't get a straight dart, really. I, I know he's been suffering with his grip, one of his fingers. He's got a problem in his fingers and uh, he, he cannot uh, stretch the, the hand proper, so he cannot release the dart, so he's keeping... Um, Hitting his his finger when when he throws a dart, uh, I just hope he get over it. And you know, uh, it's it's one of the worst things when you play darts if you have a, a problem like that. You know, I just. But uh, the good thing is Brazil is getting stronger and stronger. Um, uh, this lockdown ha- helped uh, Brazilian people come together and practice and practice 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 and get more. So we are having a couple of 80 plus average every now and then in the Brazilian Brazil leagues, wow. which I think it can help me a lot next time when I go to the World Cup, really. You know, if they, they perform like they can, uh, you never know. Yeah, I think um, you're absolutely right about also South American darts in general um, developing because um, the fact that that's their tournament organized online also made it um, uh, like People from from other South American countries come together. I've, th- I've seen players from Chile, from from Colombia, from Costa Rica, and then Brazil, of course, playing in one tournament. Um, yeah, before we go to to that and the, the the part your your brother has with his YouTube channel in in organizing those tournaments. Um, yeah, the PDC always uh, invites Brazil for the World Cup of Darts. They invite um, a South American qualifier. How is uh, the connection between? Um, South America and Brazil uh, and the PDC. Um, yeah, it's been you know great. Or what can I ask more f- uh, mm-hmm. for PDC? You know, they they give my my country a spot in the World Cup. They um, they give my region, you know, South America, uh, a spot in the in the World Cup in the World Championship, which hadn't happened since 2012, I think. You know, um, so I, I I feel I feel proud of the work I've done here. But I, it's just something, it's part of me. I need to help South America does grow. And they are coming together very nicely. You know, the guys from Costa Rica are really hardworking. And I met them about three or four years ago. Uh, they had never played a tournament outside Costa Rica. And they, they traveled wow. to Brazil for, for the World Championship qualifier. And after that, they just been... Uh, getting stronger and stronger and stronger, you know. And I, I really think Costa Rica is the next one to look for if they can find somehow a way to to send a, a, a one or, or two dot players to Q School, for example, to get a little bit more experience. I'm sure they can they can produce some some quality uh, players because uh, they are so strong. They're so well organized. Every year they get more and more players you know it's it's kind of a rule in the, the, the leagues you know every team has to bring one new player every year so okay. that that makes you know the darts grow even more in, in the in the in the country um but um what i'm most enjoying is see argentina chile colombia now you know they are getting bigger they are getting exposed they they people are starting to um, follow Brazil's steps, you know, and I'm very happy to be to be the one to make everything happen, you know, with my efforts here. Yeah, you are uh, a big ambassador for darts in South America. What um, developments in in darts do you do you see happening? Do you see maybe a WDF tournament being organized in Brazil, for example? Do you maybe see some PDC South American tour somewhere yeah. in in the future? <laughs> that's that's the dream. That's uh, I, I hope I hope I die after I make that happen. You know, maybe a, a World Series. But what what I uh, what the things um, my my thought about the short term uh, is we're gonna make this um, event because last year not no not 2020 2019 we hosted uh, a big exhibition for me in Costa Rica. It was the first international tournaments there, and we had. Plenty of uh, of attendance. Uh, I think more th- about 150 players attended there. Most most of them from Costa Rica, of course. But we had people from Spain, um, people from US, 
Brazil, of course, uh, and uh, Guiana. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was a big, big tournament. And I think with the World Championship qualifiers moving to to Costa Rica, we can make that a year tournament and maybe grab more sponsors and, and developing um, these tournaments or a festival of darts around these tournaments. You know, so you have the qualifier for the World Championship, but you also have a cricket tournament, uh, a singles tournament, a pass tournament, mixed pass tournament. We can host everything in a very long week of darts. And who knows after that if we can put the prize money up and, and register for one of the WDF tournaments that, that will get exposure they need, you know. And once we do that in, in one country, then you will know this, what, what's the step-by-step -step to do in, a, in the second country, in a third country, and, and then just try to, to get a tour there. I've got, I've got a, a very good business plan for, for um, a kind of South America tour there, but mm -hmm. I don't have the money to, to do it. So I need to, to wait until the opportunity comes and, you know, maybe insert uh, my knowledge and my experience um, to, to help that growing there when every time I can really, but I never give up every day. I'm involved in a different thing, a political thing about starts in South America. And, and I hope I can make it before I, uh, I die. You're doing uh, amazing uh, work, uh, Diogo. And I'd, and I'd love to, visit one of those tournaments in, in Brazil or, or Costa Rica, those darts festivals. I remember when we spoke almost a year ago, you were also talking about some uh, exhibition in uh, Panama. Um, yeah, do you still have contact with those guys? Are there any plans when yeah. COVID is over to organize yeah, something? Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, the, the, uh, the exhibition in Panama is basically in the same basis as in Costa Rica, uh, mm. what we did last year. So basically we, we hold a, the... Uh, um, World Championship qualifying in Brazil, and then I had exhibition in, in Costa Rica. And the, the plans for 2020 was to to hold the uh, qualifying Costa Rica and exhibition in Panama, uh -huh. and maybe uh -huh. next day after hold the uh, the qualifying in Panama and and the exhibition in another. So I kind of every year, if I I can bring one one extra country to the uh, dart circuit in South America then in about 10 years we'll be strong. You know, that's a long, long-term long plan, but it's it's what, uh, it's what I want to, you know, and every, if every year if every year we host the qualifying in a different country and we, we try to get as much exposure for this country as we can, uh, then one day things will happen, you know. It just waits for the right time, the right opportunity to come. Mm -hmm. I think you're absolutely right about that. Um, let's talk about darts in... Brazil itself, um, you grew up with darts, um, uh, playing darts in Brazil. And if one wants to play darts and develop itself um, in your country, in Brazil, obviously you moved out to develop yourself, but if someone wants to develop him or herself in your own country at first, where does he start with playing mm -hmm. darts? Um, well, now we got a loads of online leagues uh, running through Brazil and, uh, you know, every time, every kind of, online leagues you, you want to and that's a good starting point you know um we got the namoska tool which is my my brother's ch channel we got um a brazilian league which is splitting divisions every di a, 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 in each division there are 12 players so we got four or five divisions playing and that helps as well and i am also um giving coaching uh as much as I can for for beginners, you know. So if people want to start playing darts and they want to have a look in the technique and get to know rules or, or games to practice or how to improve, I've got um, a group of five or six students now, and uh, they're just people that just started. So I'm I'm trying to help as much as I can online. You know, of course, it's not. Um, the best thing to do, but at least it's something that I can guide them. You know, look, I did that, I did that, and that helps. That can, uh, That's the first step you need to do. That's the second step you need to do, and then try to improve. So uh, one of my first students was, um, he, he had just started. He's a Brazilian guy playing in the U.S., mm -hmm. and um, he started with 36, 36, 38 average, and just like last month he... he, he 
uh, injured his shoulder. But before that, he was nearly getting to 60, so wow. 60 average. So in, in about, what, seven, eight months, you know, following my routines, uh, he nearly got to 60 average, you know, from, from a guy that had just started. You know, so I think I got a, a good plan in, in, in practice uh, and I'm, I'm trying to help people as much as I can in Brazil, but unfortunately I can, cannot help or do everything. You know, I need some people to support me in, in, in the other thing because I'm not there. I'm here doing my job as well, you know, so it's hard. But, you know, I, I, I've opened a company as well in Brazil for sell, uh, to, to sell uh, dart, dart boards and, mm -hmm. and darts and flights and stamps, you no know, equipment in general which I think will be uh, at a full uh, opening in June, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not wrong. You know, so we, we're going to receive all the equipments we need. It's not going to be much, but uh, it's, it's something to start with. You know? So I think in June we're going to start the sales in Brazil and, and South America. We're not going to be only in Brazil. We're going to be in South America as well. And I hope by that... Um, we can have more players, you know, more dartboards in, in a lot of different houses in, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So definitely some nice developments going on there. Um, um, you are definitely an ambassador for the dart sport in Brazil and South America. Um, but also, as you said, uh, the Premier League will be broadcasted in Portuguese with you as, uh, as commentator. Um, with the rising, uh, with, um, with the rising of uh, José de Sousa, um, do you feel like you're also representing the, the Portuguese-speaking community a little bit and making darts bigger for them? Yes, definitely, definitely. I've got loads of friends in Portugal. Um, uh, I respect too much the, 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 um, uh, the dart players in Portugal. They have a nice instructor. They're just... Uh, the the only point is they are they are they have loads of independent associations. They need to um. put everything together because in in every in uh, each region of of Portuguese um, country, um, they kind of do their own tournaments, but they don't speak to themselves, you know. So they need to put them together, which I think is is happening, you know. And uh, I even be invited to to help them, which mm. I. I do whatever they want. You know, Portugal is a lot easier for me to get to than Brazil. So I don't mind being this kind of ambassador for Portuguese uh, speakers, you know, but I think they are well represented by José. You know, uh, I, I, I don't want to spoil the, um, his, his um, how can I say, his spot. In, you know, uh, he's a Portuguese guy. But if I can help them, I will. Of course I will. Yeah. Very nice. So one last point of um, uh, darts in South America. Um, yeah, you all were already talking about that YouTube channel from, from your brother, uh, Zay Mario. It's called Na Mosca. Um, it's certainly growing, um, a growing channel, growing Facebook page as well. Um, yeah, it, it brings darts players together from Chile, Argentina, Costa Rica, Colombia, and also wrote down there's a strong link with uh, Spanish and Portuguese players. Um, yeah, do you think the the COVID crisis, in a way, brought South American darts players uh, closer than ever playing online? Yes, yes, definitely. We have a big problem in South America, which is actually not South America; it's the whole America. Is that we are massive countries, you know, like it's massive region, just regions. Just Brazil takes all over Europe. You know, if you get the extension of Brazil itself. It's as big as Europe, and you have like 35 countries in Europe. You know, it's it's just like it's it's nearly impossible for us to meet every month to play darts because the traveling costs too much. It's like you know people from Poland and they travel every time to the UK or UK traveling every time to Czech Republic. It's 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 every time to travel from one side to another in Brazil. It's like three, four hours in a plane. Um, so if you go north to south, then it's even more. You know, it's eight, nine hours. You know, it's it's, it's the same distance as from here, to England to Rio. If you go north, north to south, it's it's crazy. It's mm -hmm. crazy there. You know, and if you if you add the other countries in South America, it's even worse. So the online game actually 
help us to have a tool, to have tools to to play more often because we cannot rely only on playing in our states or our cities. That's that's not enough. You're not not going to improve if you don't play people from elsewhere. You, you you've got to be playing different people all the time and better play people. So that that helps us to get, to have a little bit more of connection with with better players. You know that's for sure. So I hope they make the most of it. And and when things come back to normal, um, they these uh, online games don't die. You know just keep playing and every time we can meet up face to face we do as well you know but it's so hard we we can't have tournaments there every week like we have here in the uk we 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 have to to set up tournaments every two or three months you know because the distance is so much and it costs so much to travel from one country to, to another that people wouldn't afford a, a, a tool like here but if we can put together five five or six countries to host one tournament every two months, which is my plan, then we might work in a South America tour, you know, like the Australian tour, mm-hmm. you know, it's or the New Zealand tour as, as well. You know, so that's that's my intention, really. Well, that that is a great intention. And if you see um, the darts in Asia, the Asian tour is all... Uh, like the continent is it's also huge and it's possible over there um so why not in in south america you you have the plans in your mind i, I hope you can convince the pdc or uh, maybe the wdf to do something about it because um yeah those are great ideas um there are still a couple of days left for you to um practice for for q school or at least um yeah just practice for q school what what are what's the schedule for you for the next couple of days before you uh, attend the the one B um, tournament of Q School. Well, I have been practicing really hard, but I know that, and that was some mistakes a few years ago where I uh, I over practice before Q School, and then I wasn't rest enough. So now I know the rest is as important as the as the practice. So if I practice four or five hours one day, the next day I practice only one. You know that's my balance now, um, and also there will be days where I don't even touch the dart because I need to recover 100%, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, I don't know if today is going to be my day off or if I'm going to play only one hour. I will decide later. I'm probably going to play one hour and tomorrow day off and Tuesday another four or five hours and Wednesday off, you know, and Wednesday is the day I go to Q school. Um, and then Thursday I'm I'm back on the dartboard finally playing face-to-face real games. That's what I need. <laughs> yes, for sure. On Thursday, ready to shine, Diogo. It was nice to talk to you again about uh, your experience. Your um, You always have great ideas about darts in South America. So I want to wish you all the best for uh, at Q School and, uh, and all the best at uh, uh, developing darts in South America. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. Appreciate it.